Hey, hey, hey! This is Crash Brummagin with Death Trap Inc. Hitting y'all up, giving you all a YouTube update on the Death Trap Drift Truck. So, uh, yeah, here's the thing. Uh, I blew up my rear end. I blew the old one up. Uh, pinion bearing went. When the pinion bearing went, it sent pieces to both carrier bearings. When the carrying bearings went, it took out the main ring and pinion gear and the clutch pack in the old Dodge Limited slipper end. Um, I've come to find out that those old rear ends, that was a weak point. So, eh, good to know. Anyways, on to the more fun part of the project. As you can see here, that, my friends, is a disc brake rear end. And no, it is not a Dodge. That is a GM. That's a Dodge. That's a Chevy. That's a Dodge. That's a Chevy. That Chevy is going in the Dodge. Uh, it was a coil with lower control arms. I want to say it's like a two-link suspension or three-link. Three-links, I think what they call them, with the panhard bar in the back. Um, correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, uh, brake lines are the same size. The rotors are going to be nice. That gives me option for a dual caliper setup on the rear end for drifting, which is pretty sweet. Uh, it's really going to make this truck one step closer to being a dedicated drift vehicle. Mm. Oh, and I, uh, I did go from, I had 392s in the rear end uh, before. Now I'm going to 308s. So it's going to drive more like a car. It's not going to be as torquey off the line, but I should have a lot more get up and go once she's rolling. So uh, I built the truck for high horsepower or high RPM horsepower. She uh, really doesn't kick in until about three grand on this little small block Dodge that's under the hood. So this will be fun. Um, I did want to do this video mainly to point out a few problems here. Uh, different pieces of the conversion. A lot of people out there, you read on forums and like, oh, you can't do this and you can't do that. None of this stuff's ever going to fit underneath of that. Are you insane? This is disc brakes. Those were drums. How's that all going to work? Well, here you go. I'll give you the one-on-one uh, -on -one skinny. So the skinny is the leaf springs are coming out. Who needs Leafs? Who wants Leafs on a race car? I mean, come on. Even the pro touring and the pro stock guys, that are, or the pro touring cars that they're building, the old 70s muscle cars, these are the first things to go. So, these are going to go bye-bye. These old shocks, they're going bye-bye. All that stuff's going bye-bye. Um, I don't know if the fuel tank can stay or not yet. I may have a clearance issue, as you can see, going straight across between the two. I've only got about hmm, four inches or so of clearance. So I'm not sure if my sway bar links and all that stuff are going to clear. I may end up moving the fuel tank into the bed of the truck or cutting a hole in the bed of the truck and kind of lifting it up, uh, giving it more clearance. We'll see. Uh, that's actually not that big of a deal. The hardest parts here are going to be getting the old rear end in here. Once it's lined up and get it squared in true, I'm going to have to do my lower links are going to get welded onto the frame underneath here somewhere, wherever that distance measures to be on both sides squared on the truck um the old bump stops are coming out on both sides these little rubber tubes uh rubber pieces they're the axle bump stops you know bottom the axle on the frame they're gone and in place of these i'm gonna make some upper coilover mounts because i'm putting coilover shocks in this uh let's go take a look at this you can see this old circle here and the one on the other side there is where the old coil springs rested. And then they actually had shocks that came down and mounted uh, elsewhere on the axle tube. And I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to do that at all. I'm going to do the coilover kit. I mean, if you're going to go this far in a build, why not do fully adjustable coilover suspension? Everything on this truck is going to be so custom on this rear end that... I have to have as much adjustability as possible. So for those of you looking at going this far with the build, do the look at the, the research for the very, the most expensive, most extravagant build you can do and try to copy that to the best of your ability. That being said, um, I'm gonna burst a lot of bubbles here. This is not gonna cost two, three, four thousand dollars. This isn't even going to cost a grand to do. I got that rear end right there delivered for 275 to my house from Craigslist. Talked the guy down. He was asking 350. I got him down to 275, delivered it, dropped it off. Um, 
I'm gonna pull the coilovers. The adjustable coilovers are the only new, th the only thing that I'm buying new, and I'm gonna try to avoid that if I can. I'm going down to junkyards every weekend and checking cars. Uh, a lot of Mustangs, modern day Chargers, Camaros, a lot of those have an adjustable coilover suspension underneath of them that people never think about looking from. And since you're building custom mounts for top and bottom here, you might as well look at a more modernized suspension because the modernized adjustable coilovers have a lot more features and better valving than the older stuff does versus spending seven, $800 on a pair of new shocks. Um, my local junkyards are selling the coilovers for about 75 for a pair, 75 to hundred bucks. So that's 375. Uh, the lower links for this, I'm actually gonna go pull out of another Z28 Camaro. I'm gonna pull the links. Um, buddy here in town has one sitting in his yard. He was telling me 50 bucks, I can have all the lower links that I need. I'm gonna have to buy bushings new and I'm gonna have to buy the lower link mounts for the frame new. Um, the bushing kit I haven't looked up yet, the lower link, the mounts for the lower links on the frame, uh, 25 for both sides. So, you know, I'm still under 500 bucks, which is pretty fucking impressive if you ask me. So, all those forums, all those sitting there, all that reading and everything else you do, nothing beats actually doing it. If you've got a project like this, you're working on something like this, get out there and go work on it. Get something done with it. I mean, the only way to know is to try, right? I called all the shops here in Tucson, every single rear end shop, differential shop, four by four shops, and everybody told me to just go buy a Chrysler rear end for $500, a thousand bucks, put it in and call it done. That there's no way in hell that I could even come close to doing this swap for the same amount of money. Now, let me say this. I got quoted at the lowest end, $2,000 to have my old rear end built to handle what I'm gonna put this through. So that's my goal, is if I can cut that in half, I'm gonna keep this under less than half. I'm gonna keep this whole build under 900 bucks for a full complete disc brake conversion rear end swap to a GM rear end in a 95 Dodge Ram. And I'll bet money that I can do it. And if you think I'm wrong, you put your name on this page. I'm gonna keep the receipts of all this stuff. And I'll tell you what, you beat me, I owe you a beer and a shot of whiskey. So, keep watching the channel. Even if it's to prove me wrong, I encourage you to do so, knowing that no matter what, me and that baby right there are gonna dominate this. You may not see us out here this year, but you will see us on the track next year. We're gonna rock this. We're gonna build this death trap, ink, death drift truck, and it's gonna be a namesake. It's gonna be a brand, and it's gonna be badass. So, thank you all for watching the channel. This is Crash Brummage in here with Death Trap Inc. Hit y'all up later and keep on watching, man.